So Catalina Island is just a unique and beautiful place. We just want families to understand where people are going. The island is 30 miles long and at its longest and six miles wide at its widest. In two harbors, it's only about 400 yards wide. That's what separates the west end from the rest of the island. That's also our main resource. It's where we go if we need emergency fuel or it's where the hyperbaric chamber is in case of water emergencies. There's a helicopter pad there and that's where the paramedic boat is stationed. Our first, um, <clears throat> our first resource in an emergency is what we call the Baywatch boat. It's a high powered diesel boat just like the one you'd see off of Newport or Malibu, white with orange writing. They can get to camp in, on average, about six minutes. Um, if we determine with our in-camp volunteer medical doctor and or whatever other uh, medical staff we have that we have an emergency beyond the paramedic's ability, we can medevac people. We do have a helicopter pad in camp and in two harbors. So while we are rural, we do have connections to uh, direct connections to uh, hospitals in Long Beach and San Pedro, as well as Avalon for uh, less serious incidents. And you, and you can see, as I mentioned, the, the island is 30 miles long, so we're about a little over 20 from Avalon. I tell people it's easier to get to Long Beach than it is to get to Avalon from camp, uh, mostly because we don't have passenger vehicles to take more than one or two people at a time that distance. Any questions there before I, before I move on? Yeah. What kind of emergencies can be Avalon Hospital there? Um, I, don't, I can't really describe a specific line. Uh, we, we have our doctors in camp, most of them alumni of camp staff. We have been open for 90 years as a Boy Scout camp. Um, our doctors in camp have performed uh, stitches. We have a, a health lodge, a full medical facility with... Um, uh, why am I blanking out? Uh, the ability to uh, give someone an intravenous uh, nutrition and, uh, and have allergy medications and things like that. We also have cold storage for youth who have medications that need to stay cold, and that refrigerator is under lock and key by the in camp doctor of the week. Um, Avalon, we were probably not likely to send anyone to Avalon. If they're going to leave camp, they're going to go to Memorial Hospital in Long Beach. Um, now this next sheet that I'm showing here is our camp map, and even if it even if it doesn't seem like it, I uh, took a lot of time to clean this baby up. On the left side, you see our campsites, which which aren't too important to you at this point. Um, we will not be able to let you know your specific campsite until about the Thursday before you arrive at camp. And that is because the tent numbers in each campsite is going to change every week. Uh, we, because the, like I said, we won't be able to guarantee you a campsite until the week just before you arrive because our campsite sizes change. The needs of each week and each troop um, are, are uh, in, uh, specific. So if you want to know that, you can email us. What's the largest troop you have in uh, the reason we can't tell you till the third day before is because we'll build a campsite for you. Uh, we have the campsite number one and campsite number three, La Jolla and Malibu. They tend to have around 25 or 30 tents, so about 60, 60 total. But we can certainly add tents to that campsite, which is why we wait uh, to, to tell people which campsite they're in. Now, another reason for a special request form, if you want a campsite, next to a bathroom or as far as you can possibly be from a bathroom <laughs> or etc close to nature because your boys love it or any anything like that that's another reason to use the special request form we will uh, let you know that we've received it but we won't necessarily give you a specific answer until we're able to facilitate that for you i, I can almost guarantee that between myself and our admin staff we're going to get some a uh, percentage of what you ask and, and a special request form done for you. We really do try our best to accommodate. We have at any given time about 135 staff members at camp. It's a very big operation. So give us those forms and we'll do our very best to serve your needs. This, is e this part on the left is even more important. The bold, 
words that you see that are, uh, that are set to the left of the page are different areas in camp that are clearly labeled on this map. This is, this is going to tell you where all of the merit badge classes and achievements are located throughout, uh, during the week. Sometimes a badge that's considered nature isn't going to be in the nature area. For example, there's an eco classroom in the center of camp. It's made out of completely recycled materials. It's got solar panels. We teach energy and conservation badges there outside of the nature area. So this legend on the left is really going to help your scouters and your kids as they move throughout camp to get to their badges on time so they get everything done. Uh, these things will not change. Most of the buildings you see are permanent and the campsites have been there for decades. You'll notice all the campsites are named after beaches in California. Uh, no specific reason why. And um, all those signs and everything are clearly marked. They're actually brand new this year. Troop 127 came out and helped us stain and paint those just about a week ago. So we, uh, so everything's very clearly marked. The next page in your packet is what to bring. In most cases, this is a little more self-explanatory because you drive your SUV, your van, your pickup into camp and you park it a matter of yards away from where you're going to spend the night. At Emerald Bay, you're not going to have that luxury. Everything that you're going to have in camp, you're going to bring in a duffel bag form. Uh, it's important to us, the state of California and the transportation provider, that you can carry everything that you bring. Troop gear, and I don't, I don't mean to be negative, troop gear, I would say, is less necessary at a camp like ours because of the travel. Uh, don't bring staves to set up an entryway to your camp. Please, it'll be so difficult for you on both ends. Um, please don't bring things to build in your campsite. We have a big scoutcraft area, and if we need to, we will lend you some things to decorate. Um, do bring troop flags, American flags if you'd like. You don't even need a post for it. We've got a, we've got a flag pole with a pulley system in every campsite. So as long as your flags have grommets or holes, you can put those up in your tent site when you arrive at camp. So folding it up in a bag so you can, so I, like I said in the beginning, you can carry everything with you. But I'm going to get into a little scuba information as well. I've been part, I, I went through the program as a youth and I've been working at camp for a long time. If you plan on bringing scuba gear, that's okay. Do not bring tanks or weights, if you could please note that. If you, if you are already a, a scuba diver, a certified scuba diver, or if you're going for your certification, do not bring tanks or weights. We provide those at no cost to, to anyone who, who uses our scuba program who's paying for Rugged S, Rugged O, BSA Scuba, any of those programs, we're going we're gonna to provide those for you. It's just too much gear to carry. All right. Uh, <clears throat> some of these other things are just recommendations for troop leaders. I'm going to take this time to get into what I, what I think, and of course, set up your troop the way that you prefer, what I think works the best in our camp environment. And that is giving a, a specific role to each adult leader that you have. Um, the three top roles that I can think of are schedule holder, banker, and medic or, or uh, prescription holder, if you will. So having an adult who's in charge of all the boys who take a medication is a great way to make sure that they all are taking their medication that it's not lost, that it doesn't end up in an unsafe place. Like I said, we've got a, <clears throat> we've got a health lodge that's adjacent to our dining hall right here. It's got three rooms, it's got a refrigerator and a full bathroom, it's got bunks so we can quarantine people. Uh, if you have a medic adult leader, connect them with our doctor during the week and we'll make sure that everybody's getting their medicine and it's taken care of correctly. I mentioned a banker. That would be in regards to the cash that we recommend each person to bring to camp. The recommendations that we make on bringing cash to camp, 
are referring to needs like handicraft projects, shooting sports um, cost, and of course memorabilia and things here and there that kids might want to bring home. I recommend, not a necessity, for one adult leader to hold a bank, have Ziploc baggies for each boy, and give them five or ten dollars at a time. Or if they say, I want that thirty dollar sweatshirt, give them thirty dollars. That way you don't end up having a kid who buys a case of Butterfingers and swears to our store staff that the Scoutmaster wants it for an incentive for a game and I'm gonna buy it. It's, I'm gonna share it and then he ends up selling it on the black market to other troops or getting attacked by a Catalina Island foxes at night for his chocolate. So again, not a necessity, but just from our experience, we recommend that. You have a leader hold money for the youth. Uh, I, if, if, if you're going for learning situations and giving them responsibility, I'm totally with it, but explain to them the expectation there and the fact that they could lose that money, it could be stolen, it could fall in the ocean. So uh, just keep all those things in mind. The last adult that I mentioned was, um, was a schedule keeper, and this one's quite important, potentially the scoutmaster, a very organized person, or somebody that all the scouts know. This will be the person that gets them to their classes on time, that knows where kids are supposed to be. So if Jimmy is at the trading post during the beginning of session three, you know that he's 15 minutes away from his class and he better, better get going, right? We can let him know those kinds of things. Also, <clears throat> we use a unique form of uh, blue card. Is, it, is, it, is there anyone who is familiar with the process that we use? So instead of blue cards, we use blue sheets. And this is in the packet, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll talk about it when we see the text as well. But it's very important that that one leader checks in on the boys midweek. We offer an opportunity for that leader to talk to our area directors and make sure the boys are showing up, make sure they're signing into class, because that's how we're going to digitally give these awards at the end of the week. We're not going to sign individual blue cards. From the, the online registration of merit badges that starts Monday to the leader checking up on their boys to make sure they're, take, they're being counted in roll and they're showing up to class and doing the requirements to the last day when we hand you a sheet of what we've documented that everyone's done. Um, that all might be in the hands of your committee chair, whoever's registering for the troop or whoever's going to help these boys get to their classes. Uh, it makes it a lot easier on the back end for us to correct things for you. We store everything digitally and it really, that, what that does is it puts a lot of pressure on the boys to make sure they're checking into class. And, to, and then when we give that opportunity on Wednesdays for you to follow up on the boys to take that seriously and check in with our leaders to make sure that we are keeping track of what's actually going on. <clears throat> um, these are all just recommendations for scoutmasters and things like that. Again, remember, try to avoid bringing large things that are difficult to carry into class or into camp. Uh, under scoutmaster needs, I'm going to highlight a few things. Um, the claim form is referring to an ind additional insurance. I assume a lot of you are West LA because you're able to meet here. If not, every troop that is out of council needs to provide secondary medical insurance in camp. So I recommend two copies of it. All you have to do is email or call your council office and they can email you a policy. What this is, is a second insurance policy in case an accident happens. So the, the emergency um, responders or the hospital can determine um, if it's just on insurance that the boy's parents provide or if the Boy Scouts are gonna step in and also take some of that liability. If you're part of West LA, no need to do anything like that. I have all those things on file. If you're out of council, make sure you bring two copies. That way if something does happen, Give one to me and keep one for the troop. Um, another important one is a padlock. You don't need it because we will be able to rent some, but they're limited. We do have lockers, which we would prefer adults control. We have lockers guaranteed one for every troop in camp. 
but we either rent locks or you can use your own. So if you have a padlock, a key lock, or a combo lock that you can bring, it makes it easier for you because then you don't have to check it in and out of the clerk's office at the beginning of the week. We've got, like I said, one locker for each troop that has power outlets inside. If you're a leader that has something very valuable that needs to charge, hearing aids, cell phone, tablet, we provide those for you, but we don't provide the lock uh, for free. So bring a lock or prepare to rent one. Yeah. Actually, they are located right, they're connected to this very first bathroom, which is uh, pretty much towards the middle of camp, accessible by everyone. On the back side of it, it's just a wall of lockers. And there is power in every single one. <clears throat> All right. Check out the equipment provided by camp, because that's a nice way of saying, please don't bring these things. Tables, um, fire extinguishers, brooms, wash stands. We, uh, trash barrels, all that kind of stuff we do provide in each campsite. National Boy Scouts require that we do trash cans, water fountains, um, and, and tables, uh, fire extinguishers as well. Those are all in camp. Yeah, you know, and that's still, if you bring it, you're not going to get in trouble, but I really, I would prefer it and I would recommend that you don't try to schlep that thing back and forth on the boat. It's going to be tough. What's, the place What's that? The, uh, that that's that I, I actually shouldn't have added that in there. It's an old document. I, I bridged it into the insurance, so don't don't worry about that. That one of the um, a form there that I didn't mention that will come up again later in the packet is the manifest. We are not going to rely on your registration as a ship's manifest in the state of California. We need to know exactly who is traveling on the boat. We will accept a manifest that is handwritten while you're at the terminal if boys back out or if somebody, a new parent takes a place of an old one. The ship's manifest is specifically who is on the boat the morning that we leave for camp. So it's a different list than just registration. If, if, it works if you print a registration sheet and then mark off people that didn't show up, but we need to know exactly who is on the boat the day of. So that's what the ship's manifest is. I won't go through all these individual items, but for your parents who haven't done, haven't sent their, their youth on week, week long camps, uh, camp outs, or for people who just are concerned that it's an island and it's a totally unique environment, we've literally told you exactly what you need. If you bring everything here, you're going to be fine. All the items that have an asterisk, we provide for sale at the trading post. So you could bring those or you could plan uh, on the spending cash for the scout to buy those things. <clears throat> yeah. On the uh, mess kit, so there's not going to be any paper plates or anything for the board? So because of water rationing right now, we are using a lot of disposable uh, utensils, but the mess kit that's on the list is specific for our war canoe program. Every troop will be taking an overnight trip out of camp in war canoes. These are eight person canoes, seaworthy, and that is what you need a mess kit for. And when I say mess kit, I mean bowl, fork, something to drink out of. That's really it. You don't need a little mini backpack with, with two different size containers. You're going to be patrol method cooking stew and cobbler. So the mess kit that we're referring to is just for war canoe. It can be very basic. When you're eating at the dining hall, we will provide all of your utensils throughout each normal day of camp. <clears throat> Not in the boats, but there is a hiking option to get you to the destination. Yeah, so non-swimming adults or scouts, you will still participate in war canoe. It's just as awesome. It's an even quicker hike than it is a canoe, and you'll be able to join up with your trip. That's right, you'll leave just after breakfast on one day and you'll return just before breakfast the next. And hopefully to head off some other questions, all of our merit badge programs are built for the scouts to miss one day for war canoe. That does put pressure on them to not miss any other session. But it is built for them to miss one full day for war canoe. <clears throat> is it organized by troop or is it, uh, is it taking different merit badges? Yeah, so what we, we have lesson plans that are built around War Canoe, 
where one rotating day in the week is a makeup day. Our instructors are all, all prepped, untrained on this. So basically, uh, they will repeat curriculum um, pretty much on Wednesday and Thursday. And the group who, who was there, who was gone Tuesday, will break off with another staff member and do the work that everyone else did that day. Um, it's, it's an awesome, awesome thing. You are going to see growth in 24 hours in some of your boys, uh, making them canoe with their gear in the ocean, making them work together. Um, this is uh, prompting me to mention our troop guide ranger program, which we are very proud of, which I know a lot of camps do as well. We have one youth staff member who's assigned to each troop. This boy is gonna be the SPL's best friend and also going to be the person that makes sure you guys get to do all the extracurriculars that you want to do. This is called your troops ranger. Uh, that's actually how war canoe is split up in each day. Groups of rangers will take the couple of troops that they're representing together on war canoe. So you'll stick together with your troop and you'll be with another troop that your ranger is also um, guiding. And we'll talk about rangers and SPLs more in a few minutes. Are any other questions about what to bring? or anything else that bridged me to. Um, if they have it and they can carry it, yes. We, we only charge for snorkel gear rentals if we are, um, if we are not, if you are not required to have snorkel gear for that, uh, let, let me start over. The only time that we're gonna make you pay for snorkel gear is a free time snorkel session, a dad and a kid or a group of kids just want to go snorkeling for fun after lunch. During war canoe, if you're in BSA snorkel or if you need to snorkel for life-saving merit badge, we're going to provide you those. We have 150 to 250 sets, so um, we have enough to cover everybody that needs it. If Basically, if we're forcing you to snorkel to, to complete an activity, we're going to give you the snorkel. But if you want to just go off during the free session and have a snorkel on your own, then that's when it's five bucks with a deposit. Is there a troop snorkel? Or is it troop snorkel is one of those free time. I, I, I'm gonna pretty sure that's the way we're gonna do it. Uh, we don't want to charge, but we need some cash flow to buy more every year. We we buy about 150 every year. I think it's a five dollar charge with a ten or fifteen dollar deposit. So you. You really only end it. Snorkel fins mask. No, 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 per set. Yep. But again, you'll only have to pay for those snorkels for a free time snorkel session. For War Canoe, for the Merit Badge, for, and for BSA Award, BSA Snorkel Award, we're going to give those snorkels to, to everybody. So bring them if you have them, is yes. If, if it's small enough to carry, but we do have them in camp. Yeah. For those um, citizens or parents, you know, do you have a photo of something for there just so that we know what to expect? I can show it to you now, but it is on our website too. I'll describe it. They're military style tents like most Boy Scout camps, green canvas or nylon. They're all breathable. They're on wood platforms with two cots and two mattresses in each one. So two boys will share a tent. Most of the time, two adults will share a tent as well. If they're of different sexes or of odd numbers, an adult will probably get their own tent for themselves. Uh, but we can't guarantee that that's going to happen for every adult. So two boys to a tent, green military style canvas, wood floor platform. You're raised about five or six inches off the ground. And, uh, and we have a plastic covered mattress that is bleached in between weeks and a spring cot, a, a, a metal spring cot. So they can stash their bag underneath the cot and, and live up on the mattress. But ideally, they won't spend much time in that tent. Sure. Now, the OA sash, is there a ceremony? We, I am in the process um, with one of our young staff members to try to bring the Order of the Arrow back into Emerald Bay for some reason over the past decade. It is, it is the, the, the sever, we, we have severed, I don't know why. So the one thing that we have done that we started last year is just a fellowship 
uh, evening after dinner one day, we'll meet, do a quick service project, and have cookies and talk about OA. So if OA members want to bring their sash, we invite them to wear them that day, and they can they get a they get a treat and they meet up behind the dining hall. But we don't have an OA ceremony, a tap out, or anything like that. Uh, these one, most of these are self-explanatory things to leave at home. There's two things on here that are recommendations. Everything else we do not want to see. Most of them are very obvious. The two things that I'll talk about now are cell phones and jewelry. Um, I'm, in no way am I ever going to tell a leader not to bring their cell phone. There are places in camp where you will get service. Text messages, photo messages, and even phone calls can go through if you're standing in the right area. Uh, Verizon is the best, followed by T-Mobile and Sprint and AT&T. Um, up above Doctor's Cove and right in front of the Helm, which is adjacent to the dining hall, are the best places to get service. We prefer that boys don't have their phones, which is why we put it on this list. Uh, we're not going to punish boys if we see them with their phones. We are. We do leave it up to the troop because a lot of people take photos with their phones. A lot of people need their phones because they have companion apps that help with their with health issues that they may have. So I, we don't have a blanket rule that no youth can use a phone, but we recommend that the troop regulates that use, keeps the phones in a central place maybe, um, or, or does not allow them at all uh, for a couple reasons. One, water damage and, and obvious just rough use that where the phone could break or be lost. Uh, theft, which we don't have much of a problem with in a Boy Scout community, but we have. I, I wish I could say we don't, but we have. Uh, and, and also, homesickness. Sometimes you think letting a child talk to their parent who they're missing is going to help them. In my experience, it does not. Um, it does not. So in, in an extreme case, using a, an adult leader's phone or using the internet connection that we provide to adult leaders, you could connect people with their parents, but I don't recommend the smallest kid with the homesick issue having a phone so they could talk to their mom because that is going to make your life very, very difficult. Uh, the camp director, John George, and I will make ourselves available for counseling of any kind, uh, inter-troop or individual. If you have issues with homesickness, if you have issues with uh, attention or with um, even feuding between, in, within a troop or, or with other troops especially, please seek John George or myself. We will make ourselves available for that kind of counseling. I uh, got off topic a little bit there. Cell phones, I recommend we don't let the kids use them, but I'm not going to take it away if I see it. <clears throat> Jewelry, same thing. We've lost wedding rings. $5,000, $10,000 necklaces and watches. I, don't, I, I wear nice watches at home sometimes, but I wear this watch at camp. Um, it's very hard to find a piece of jewelry at the bottom of the ocean. You, if you don't wear anything that you aren't prepared to lose uh, for scouts and for adults. Let's see. Everything, everything else is either health and safety or way, way too big for us to take on the boat in that list. So if anyone has any questions, stop me anytime. Um, we have had a problem in the recent years with kids walking around playing external music, uh, disturbing other people. I personally don't have a huge issue with it, but it disturbs classes. Uh, it could be offensive. It could be uh, deemed offensive by certain individuals, so we ask that there isn't, isn't external music uh, moving around camp with individuals. What do you mean by frame that? Uh, that is in an attempt to uh, keep the crews and other people handling your gear from getting injured, moving it on and off of the boat. We do prefer that in, if you're using a backpack, you use an internal frame backpack because uh, bars, old school wooden ones and, th and straps and things that hang on, on external frame backpacks can get caught in the mechanisms on the boats. Um, there's some, th sometimes there's luggage uh, Conveyors where it could it could get caught up. So we're not going to turn it away. Strap it up real neat and clean if that's the only bag you have. 
but we, we want to try to stray away from that. A, a very large body bag or duffel bag or an internal frame pack is what I recommend. <clears throat> so the mess kits, the unit insurance, and the passenger manifest, manifest I already hit, but was there anything that I was gray on that anyone has any questions there? Mess kits are very basic. We will provide everything for about 80% of what, what you eat in camp, aside from war canoe and uh, unit insurance I mentioned for troops outside of our council. Pastor Manifest is just a list of who's on the boat, separate from registration. Question, in terms of napkins, you say don't bring napkins, uh, uh, is there lighting there at night or? Um, we, we rent lanterns, both ba mostly battery powered because of fire danger. Uh, the, re the main reason why we, we say no lanterns is because um, you, you are actually legally not allowed to transport white gas or propane on these boats. Uh, if you bring a, a D battery powered lantern, that's fine. Pack it in your bag. It's big and bulky, but it's up to you if you can fit it in your gear. Feel free to bring a battery powered lantern. We're trying to avoid propane or white gas. Yeah. So you said otherwise, we don't carry the lanterns, we just rent them? Yeah, them? yeah. Um, at, at this last year, we didn't charge for lanterns. Uh, it was a first come, first serve basis, one per troop. Um, but uh, it's limited, so they're, they're battery powered. They're at the trading post, just like the locks, where, where you can check them in and out. <clears throat> but battery powered lanterns are okay. The, the, cut and, the black and white rule is that we can't have fuel containers uh, brought across on the boats. If you guys have ever been to camp before, this is the biggest change that we're going to talk about today. We are not using Catalina Express. We are not using Catalina Express. We are not leaving from the Catalina Express Berth 95 that we traditionally have for a long, long time. We were, uh, we're actually, fortunately, not using Long Beach either. What we are doing is we are being picked up and departing from the USS Iowa battleship in San Pedro. Um, for one, it has protected, covered, guarded parking 24-7 in a parking structure. Two, it's an awesome historical thing that the Boy Scouts can see. <laughs> they can walk over it, they can look at it. You guys can schedule museum tours upon your um, return to the mainland. If you're a long distance troop, or if you know a long distance troop, or even if you just want to extend your experience, USS Iowa is offering their bunk rooms to troops the Saturday night before camp. $60, $70 a person, two meals and a night on the Iowa, so you can wake up and seamlessly jump on the boat and go to camp. I'm gonna be posting that information this week as well with these new leader packets and, and everything else to get you signed up for camp. There's going to be marketing um, information for them, but we will be departing from berth 87, USS Iowa. I printed directions on the page you see now and the next page in the Spring Leaders Packet. Is that the uh, Iowa's parking lot? The Iowa's parking lot. It's open there. <coughs> there is one structure, I think they said. It might be in between the cruise terminal and the Iowa, but uh, they, they quote, I told them to quote me the highest possible parking rate that they can. That is $16 a day. That is a lot. We are negotiating with the Port of Los Angeles and the Iowa to get a weekly rate for us. I don't know if it's going to happen. I do recommend carpooling and leaving the least amount of vehicles at the terminal that you can. In my, uh, when I was a youth, We'd have about five SUVs drive drive us all in, leave one or two tr one or two trucks at the terminal, and all the other parents would take those vehicles home and return to pick us up at the end of the week. It's it's going to save the troop probably three to four hundred dollars in parking. <clears throat> uh, I am excited about using the USS Iowa as a departure location. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are going to drop off and drop, is there like a one hour is free. Okay. Each additional hour is two dollars, and sixteen is the daily maximum. Okay. But again, I'm and and that will remain for drop off and pickup. We're trying to get a weekly rate that's much less, but 
that is uh, the drop off and pick up is issue. Yeah. I seem to remember the last time we waited for the drop off or there at the reported time that it was hours until we left. Is that the expectation? That is or? pretty much the f number four reason why we're not using Catalina <laughs> Express anymore. Uh, we're using a company called Harbor Breeze Cruises that has provided um, that has provided charters directly to camp for about 10 years in the off season. They've got 450 passenger boats and they're building one 250 passenger boat because we have told them that we're gonna use them for, their, for our transportation needs this summer. Um, <clears throat> this way we have flexibility and we don't have to work around Catalina Express's ferry schedule. Uh, we had lots of issues last year with boats that were an hour and a half behind extra people having to fit on a ferry and go to two harbors and, and us absorbing thousands of dollars to get them into camp. Mm -hmm. So we are using Harbor Breeze Cruises. Feel free to check their website, reach out to their management as well. I work with them honestly on a daily basis. Uh, they bring groups to our camp every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday in the off season. Uh, they do whale watch tours out of Long Beach, but because their Long Beach location isn't ideal for 500 scouts, we're using their boats from the USS Iowa. Just so we know, what is expected for the budget? So from this chart that I put above, we are hoping to check in at 7.30 and depart by 9 o'clock. Wow. And that is on both ends. It is rad. Thank you so much. <laughs> so if you guys have been to Camp Emerald Bay before, one thing that you probably wanted to slap me over is Saturday waiting for the boats and not doing anything. And the truth, the truth there is that I can't work our staff any more than six days. They've got to have 24 hours off. So our plan is to get you guys to camp early on Sunday, do your swim checks that day, not mess with our daily schedule at all for Monday through Friday so everyone can get their merit badges, and then get you guys out of there Saturday morning by 9 or 10 o'clock at the latest. That way, nobody's playing a waiting game. Everybody can drive home on Sunday and have lunch or, or uh, excuse me, have dinner or even lunch with their families, make a soccer game, etc. cetera. We're, uh, this is a big change for me. I'm personally vested in it. I, w I appreciate your feedback and please reach out to me directly. I've got my information <laughs> everywhere. If you have issues with travel time, I can see that we will probably have one later boat option, at least for uh, arriving to camp. Uh, departing, we do plan on having everyone leave almost first thing in the morning. There's parking information and directions printed there underneath. Do you have parents show up at 10 o'clock or should they call? I think we should have parents show up at 10 o'clock. If, if we have any major change, we're going to be in communication. The transportation is really the one major change that we're making this year, 2016. It's really the only thing that we're, that we're changing, uh, only big thing that we're changing. So be in contact with me. Otherwise, this is uh, the truth, this document, this spring okay. leaders packet, which I was here working on last night. What was the company again? Harbor Breeze Cruises. Yeah, they're out of they're out of Harbor Breeze in Long Beach, or out of Rainbow Harbor in Long Beach, um, and they have a website, and they can be they their normal business is chartering people directly to our camp, and doing um, whale watching tours out of Long Beach. <clears throat> it's uh, an hour and fifteen minutes. Could be anywhere from sixty to ninety minutes, but hour and fifteen is is what we say. I assume we're going to have three boats most weekend, so they'll load and leave back to back. And that way we won't, if you've been to camp before too, that way we won't have to do the whole barge, shore boat shuffle, everyone and their, and their friend is carrying your bag and dragging it on the ground. Uh, we think it's going to be a much more streamlined process, uh, much uh, an, e an easier process for the leaders and for the staff. So. Uh, that's another main reason why we made the change. We've talked about a lot of these uh, medical records already, but actually, since no, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait till I'm finished up, and I'll introduce you guys to Carter from Malibu Divers. Um, what we've got here 
is a, basically one sheet that's letting you know how absolutely important medical forms are for camp in general. Um, everybody's got to fill out medical form A, B, and C if they are coming to camp and spending more than 72 hours. That's adults and children. Connected to all of our Boy Scout medical um, forms that we distribute and that we have on the website now. They're not in this packet. They will be distributed and they are on the website. Connected to those is the PADI medical release. Uh, pardon me, do I have the wording right? It's RSTC. It's the RSTC medical release, which is necessary for anyone doing any scuba program at camp. And Carter will get into more details on this, but we recommend that if you're going to the doctor anyway, getting a physical and filling out our A, B, and C, BSA medical, might as well do that scuba medical as well. Because there, a lot of times people change their mind and want to do scuba after they've arrived to camp. If we don't have that form, they will not be able to do it. So uh, we recommend that you just do the whole form that we provide. Although the last portion is, is specifically for scuba. We'll get into that a little bit more. <clears throat> this has a little bit more details about the hospital, but we did talk about that already. I'll try to go a little quick here because like I mentioned, our, our original delay, this form is mainly for me because I'm looking for friends. Um, we want to let any adult leaders or parents that may not even be visiting us for this specific week at camp know that we are looking and we are excited about volunteer help, specialists, friends of Camp Emerald Bay, did you come here when you were a kid, are you an electrician and you see an issue at camp that you can help us fix, etc, etc, are you a mechanic, we are on a desert island. We don't, we can't just call up Roto-Rooter or, or Achy Breaky or a contractor any given day. If you've got a leader who's coming to camp who has skills and they're willing to help us out, have them fill out this form for me so I can chat with them. Uh, have them meet up with us during the evening and talk about what kind of stuff they can do for camp or, or, or maybe issues that they see from their professional eye. We want to be connected with, with any, any resources that you have. So that's what this form is. Not required for anyone. Um, just basically so I can have friends. Again, I do live out there. <clears throat> we turned this in at camp or is this online? All these forms can be turned in online, but most people bring them all in hand to camp. Okay, you could just give it to me. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be turned in with the head commissioner and the clerk when you check in. This one we haven't talked about yet. It's very cool. We've been doing it for a while at camp. Our SPL program is made for two or four young leaders in your troop. It does cost $200 extra. These boys come out to camp on Thursday before your troop. They do some more high adventure activities that your troop doesn't necessarily get to do. They connect with some of our young adult staff and some of our rangers. They learn about our program to assure that your troop gets to maximize their experience at camp. There's also extensive leadership training and an overnighter outside of camp involved in this program. It's way cool. Only about six to ten people do it every week, in all honesty. It's a small program, but it is awesome if you've got boys that you want to challenge, young leaders that are just stepping up and maybe they're nervous about camp, you're, you're going to send them on Thursday and by the time you arrive Sunday you're going to think, we've got a new SPL. He's going to be dirty. No. <laughs> they, they're they're going to do a lot of cool stuff that nobody else is going to get to do and they're going to be able to prepare themselves and the troop to maximize the experience. So, um, cool trip, totally separate registration. The information is on here. We also have a forms and packets section on our website, campemeraldbay.org. On the left side, you'll see summer programs. Underneath that, you'll see forms and packets. Every single thing I'm talking about now, including this packet, all the forms, and instructions on forms are under that forms and packets um, link. You press it and you'll literally get links to probably 25 PDFs, some of which are screenshot instructions on how to register your boys for our high adventure rugged, rugged scuba programs, the SPL program, 
switching registrations, and basically, uh, and signing people up for merit badges. All that stuff is under forms and packets. You also have a resource in myself and Jonathan Williams. He's our camping registrar. He works here 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. He can walk you through anything registration-based. That's merit badges. That's changing registrations. That's, yeah. Jonathan Williams. His information's in the back of the packet as well. And if you call the scout office, you will get directed to either Jonathan or myself if you say Emerald Bay. Um, but it's a great opportunity for a young kid who hasn't been in SPL, maybe in ASPL or just patrol leaders. Yeah, it's a cool trip, N not required at all. Highly recommended from those who have done it. Um, like I said, six to ten boys each week will do it. They'll take the Catalina Express. I don't want to confuse anyone. This is the only time, other than a leader's early or late departure, that someone will take Catalina Express. Those boys will hit the island and we'll make a mountain bike in the camp. We'll load up their bags in the truck, they mountain bike in the camp, and it's just a cool team building leadership thing. Is there an age limitation? Uh, I think it's 14. Let me double check. You know, no. No, I don't think I don't think so. No, no. It, it literally, if you have boys, you want to prepare to be leaders in your troop. We're going to have proper adult supervision ratios with staff members once they arrive at the boat terminal. We'll have two, <coughs> excuse me, two over eighteen staff members there to host them the entire time. So, and I may have to get back to you on on age requirement, but I. I don't think we have a minimum like age. A two per troop or like that. We can do we can I we've done four per troop. It's a it's a minimum two for buddy system. We we ask that you send two boys. Yeah. They stay there all the way through Sunday. Uh, they come Thursday. They come Thursday and then stay through with the troop. Uh, so what do they eat on Saturday when nobody's there? They, the staff is there and they'll eat okay. with staff. They'll be very in. They'll, they'll, they'll feel like a like okay. a CIT almost. Okay. They'll connect with the rangers and and the staff members. It's very unique. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave this um, for when we talk scuba. Once I'm finished up, I'm gonna get through everything else. So, skip four pages for me in the packet. <clears throat> this one I know will have some questions. Merit badge registration, we normally hold off until March 31st, and I have no idea why. We're going to open it on Monday. Oh, which we will talk more about in a minute. This incorporates Patty Continuing Education, the Advanced Open Water Program. We do offer scouts the opportunity, if they want, to finish rugged scuba on Wednesday or Thursday and roll directly into Rugged O. And they can do another five or six training dives with us and come home, not only with PADI Open Water Certification, but also with PADI Advanced Open Water Certification. Uh, the upcharge for this is approximately $350. Again, if you email me, I can tell you the exact price. And by the way, your question about uh, the first aid CPR certification, uh, the, my director of training just came back. That 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 is eighty-five dollars per person, and that includes both the certification card. They also get a bandage pack. Uh, they get a little barrier keychain that contains both gloves and a barrier that they get to keep. So there's some other things that add on to it as well. So there are opportunities for additional diving, uh, EFR, emergency first responder, which is CPR and first aid, is also available as well. Uh, rugged O, like Rugged Scuba, three components, the e-learning program, not as long or comprehensive as Rugged Scuba, but still required, uh, and then five required ocean dives. Uh, we right now, two of the ocean dives are required. This is a navigation dive, a dive devoted exclusively to improving your underwater navigation techniques, and a deep dive. Uh, as I mentioned, in the Rugged Scuba program, the maximum recommended depth limit is 60 feet. Uh, and by the way, minimum age for all scuba programs at Camp Emerald Bay is 12. And they must be 12 by the time they arrive at camp. Unfortunately, we can't have somebody who turns 12 while they're at camp. 
The 12 is the minimum age. In advanced open water, the rugged oak program, if a scout is 15 years old or older, the deep dive in the program is to 100 feet. Mm -hmm. If they are younger than 15 years old, the deep dive is to 70 feet. Uh, the other dives are a boat dive, a night dive, and a wreck dive. These are all, each of these dives is the first dive of that particular specialty. So they can actually go out and dive on this wreck that we have in Doctor's Cove, and that will count as the first dive of the Patty Wreck Dive specialty. And Rugged O, like Rugged Scuba, registrations take place with the Boy Scouts. Uh, if you have young men or adult leaders who are interested, who are not yet signed up for these programs, but are interested in signing up, I would first of all encourage you to address this quickly. We already have weeks at camp, week two and week three, that are full, and we are turning people away already. So if you have uh, boys who are interested in these programs, please get them signed up as soon as possible. Uh, if you go to our website, malibudivers.com, and click on the education button, and from the education button, there will be a drop-down box, select BSA, select Boy Scouts. And when you do, there will be a whole new drop-down box that addresses, that has a page for each particular program, Rugged Scuba, Rugged O, Scuba BSA, Emergency First Response, CPR First Aid, Specialty Programs. So if you want to sign a boy up for Rugged Scuba, <laughs> MalibuDivers.com, click on the Education button, select BSA from the drop-down box, then select Rugged Scuba. When you do, at the bottom of that page, it will say, want to sign up? Click here. And it's a hyperlink that will take you back to the Boy Scout website. Now, what will happen is you go ahead, even though this boy may already be registered for camp, you go through the process of registering them for either Rugged Scuba or Rugged O. At the end of this process, it will go, congratulations, you owe us $999. Now, that is actually camp fees plus scuba fees. So what you would do is click pay by mail, and Jonathan, the camping secretary, will take your registration, they will move that boy over to Rugged Scuba or Rugged O, and Jonathan will bill you the difference. Um, depending on whether you're in council or out of council, it's my understanding you have paid approximately $600 for camp fees to send a boy to camp. So $999, less approximately $600, $399 is approximately what you will be paying for Rugged Scuba or Rugged O. Now, to be clear, that e-learning program costs $174. The package of materials that goes with e-learning, it's called a crew pack, costs another $55. That package of snorkel gear that we are providing costs close to $300. So you can see we are already well past $399. The Boy Scouts subsidize this program for Scouts. So it's a tremendous opportunity. Um, I would venture to guess that if you were to check with any dive center in the Los Angeles area, be it a small one or a big one like Sport Chalet, you would spend two to three times the $399 that the Boy Scouts are charging you for this program. This is a fantastic opportunity for boys. So uh, after uh, Rugged O is Rugged Rescue, and again, this is probably one of the best programs that a boy can take. We have to have a minimum of four people for this class. So if you have boys who are, or adults, who are advanced open water certified, and you are interested in Rugged Rescue, please email me directly. I will put you in touch with my wife, who is our director of training, and we will do what we can to get this set up for a person that you all are interested. Uh, specialties, uh, we have quite a number, and you have uh, handouts that are in your leader's packet that cover the different specialties. Uh, so things like buoyancy, peak performance buoyancy, there are two dives required for that, night diver, 
either digital photo or digital video now in the age of GoPros. Uh, it's great to learn how to actually shoot good photos and video. Navigation, Naculus. Uh, we are adding two new uh, uh, specialties out there this summer. One is shark awareness. Uh, we are big supporters of sharks. You know, when one of the most common questions I get as an instructor, you know, people who are not divers will come in and say, what about sharks? And my response to people is, worldwide, sharks, there are about 10 human fatalities for shark attacks every year. Worldwide, people kill 100 million sharks per year. So who should be afraid of who, really? So we are big supporters of sharks and shark awareness. This is a new specialty that we'll be teaching out there. We also thought it very appropriate for Camp Emerald Bay. We are creating a pirate diver specialty out there as well, which will incorporate a lot of great stuff, search and recovery, navigation, things like that, while they search for these hidden treasures that we will have out there. Again, for non-divers, we do offer the CPR and first aid, as well as O2 administration. And you can contact the Rugged programs, Rugged Scuba, Rugged O, Rugged Rescue. You sign up directly with the Boy Scouts. Any other program, any of these specialties, or we're about to talk about Scuba BSA or Discover Local Diving, any of these you register directly with Malibu Divers, and we will start taking those registrations at the shop on Monday. So you merely, you, can, you cannot right now anyway sign up on the website. So you would contact us directly. Uh, you can give us a call. The phone number at Malibu Divers, 310-456-2396. We are open seven days a week. So we are happy to answer any questions that you might have, and we are happy to take sign-ups for any of those programs. One of the things we're finding is certified divers who do not want to commit to the week-long program of Rugged O, but they do want to go diving, what they find, you can do Discover Local Diving, which is simply guided dives for certified divers, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But what we are finding is that there are a lot of these specialties that cost about the same as just booking guided dives. So especially scouts are kind of thinking to themselves, I, I think I want to learn something more while I'm out there diving rather than just dive. So these specialties, which again, because it's two, three, or maybe four dives, give scouts the opportunity to participate in other daytime activities, war canoe or, you know, different merit badge programs and that sort of thing, but still get diving in and learn something with this as well. So Scuba BSA is the other big, big program that we do out there. Scuba BSA is an opportunity for people who are not certified divers to try scuba diving while they are at camp. Uh, the cost for the program is $120. Registrations are made with Malibu divers. And uh, I believe Scott, when he talked about the medical forms that you all have in your packets for each of your scouts, Included in that medical packet is the RSTC medical form. And please, please, if you will, you must, if you are going to scuba dive at Camp Emerald Bay, you must have this RSTC medical form signed by a doctor, no exceptions. And every summer, we have scouts and adult leaders who came to camp with no intention of diving, no intention whatsoever, and they get to camp and they see these boys out there doing this program and what a great time they're having and the great things that they're seeing, and they go, I want to do this too. We can take sign-ups at camp. We can arrange for payment. We can contact parents, get a credit card. We can do everything except get that medical form signed. So please tell your scouts and your adult leaders even if they have no intention of diving, please ask them to get that medical form signed because it is heartbreaking. Every summer, we have to go to scouts and say, I'm sorry, 
you can't dive with us because you don't have the medical form. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure, so that even the scuba BSA, the minimum age is still 12? Correct. Okay. Yes, for any scuba program, the minimum age is 12. Yes, ma'am. So you say that it's a partial, uh, if it's BSA scuba, it's like a half day? It's a four-hour, yes, one four-hour block during the week, and they actually, you register and arrange payment with Malibu Divers, but they don't book their dive time till they get to camp. So I can't see that. So it's flexible. It's so extremely on flexible. When somebody gets to camp on Sunday, they find that Malibu diver staff member. They go, hi, I'm signed up for scuba BSA. And the staff member will say, great, let's look at your schedule and let's find a time for you to go diving that's not going to conflict with your other activities. <laughs> and I will tell you, in 20 years and doing probably four to five hundred hundred of these every summer, we have yet to find somebody who we could not accommodate their schedule. Okay. So again, please, medical form is critical. Um, while a person can sign up at camp, we, uh, we very much recommend that people sign up ahead of time if they know that they want to do this. Okay. Discover Local Diving is the program for certified divers. Now the thing to keep in mind here, uh, every year I will have an adult leader that will come to me and say, yeah, I'm certified. Let me see, it's been 15 years since I've been diving or something like that. A person needs to be ready to go diving when they come to see us. Now that means, you know, able to assemble your own gear. How do you do a buddy check with your buddy? How do you flood and clear a mast? How do you perform alternate air source breathing with your buddy, that sort of thing. It is in fact uh, a Boy Scout requirement that we conduct an assessment of a person's skills before we get into the water with them for Discover Local <clears throat> Diving. So it, it has been more than a couple of years since somebody has dive, been diving, they need to do a refresher, what is called scuba tune-up. Now there are a number of ways that you can accomplish this. You can go to your local dive center. If you guys are local, you can come to Malibu Divers, or if you have another dive center, you can go to them and you can do what is called scuba tune-up. Okay. <laughs> um, you can also, if you come to camp, uh, if you need a refresher, we generally will put a person for their first dive into scuba BSA. These are people that we are teaching how to dive. So it's a great platform for people who need to get refreshed. If for some reason you want more personalized attention, you can arrange for a scuba tune-up with us at camp. That is more of a one-on-one -on -one situation, okay? And will cost more money, as you might imagine. So there are a number of, of opportunities, but just bear in mind, we're going to know, you know, somebody that thinks, oh, it's been 10 years, I can probably just scoot right in there. <laughs> we're going to know, trust me. We know when somebody hasn't been diving for a while. But once you, uh, goodness, what just happened? Uh, once you have been, once you have done your first dive with us, there are all kinds of boat dives, night dives. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can be doing with us while you are out there at camp. We have diving going on every day. Okay. Uh, our pros, as I said, my wife Barbara is a PADI course director and our director of training. Uh, I, while I do not spend time much time out of camp, am a PADI master instructor. Uh, Achilles is one of our regular staff members who rotates in and out of camp on the very busy weeks. He will be out of camp, otherwise he's teaching in at Malibu Divers. Michael King is going to be our director of training this year, uh, or rather our director of scuba out at camp. And he has been out to camp for the last couple of years. He's a great guy. All of the staff out there, these are, I mean, all of the staff at Camp Emerald Bay works incredibly hard and does a fantastic job. The scuba staff, it's, it's scary how hard these kids work and what a great job they do. We have, in over 20 years, we have never had a single incident or accident out there. We have an immaculate safety record. These people are really good at what they do. Uh, they have fantastic personalities. So, and you know, basically, you tell us what you want to do, and they'll find a way to make it happen. Um, 
We do have an internship program. As I mentioned at the beginning of this, we have had kids that started in Scuba BSA, went on to Rugged Scuba, then went on to Rugged O, then went on to Rugged Rescue, and then when they turned 18 years old, came to us and interned for a summer and got their professional level dive master training and became dive masters. We also have had them then come back and get their instructor training and work as instructors out there for us. So we love these homegrown people because we know how well they've been trained. We know that they know the camp life out there. So if you have young men who are 18 years old and they are interested in that sort of a, a, a path, by all means contact us. We are in the final phases right now of interviewing and hiring for this coming summer but even going out in years beyond. We are more than happy to talk about that. So uh, basically we've talked about the rugged programs, uh, we've talked about specialties, uh, the new shark awareness and the new pirate diver programs, scuba tune-up and the importance of being prepared for those people that are gonna do discover local diving, uh, rescue diving and going pro. Uh, you guys are so, no, no other questions or anything like that? that is, okay. Um, and then, you know, who is Malibu Divers? Yeah, question. Yes, sir. Can you believe you're in the, the scuba mm -hmm. and have prices and you do it this year? No. No, that is not a certification program. So that, unfortunately, yeah. is not possible. Um, Malibu Divers is one of the oldest dive centers uh, in the Los Angeles area. We have been in the same location for 47 years. We are one of the oldest paddy dive centers. Uh, we hold paddy's highest facility rating. Uh, again, we've, uh, we've been working with the Boy Scouts now for over 20 years. We love working, you know, the Scouts, are, they're just great. Uh, you know, we love working with them. Uh, and I think it shows uh, in the way that our staff works. Um, so again, you know, we've talked about our Emerald Bay program, our pros, uh, and basically why we do what we do. Um, are there any other questions that basically I can answer for anybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, back in the early twos, we had five or seven boys go to Malibu Divers to get certified. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do that? Do you guys do merit badge? Uh, through merit the shop? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Achilles, who I pointed out, who rotates in and out of camp, is a scuba merit badge counselor. So we just contact you. Absolutely. We do it this summer at Emerald Bay. We could do it on our own. Yes. Anytime during the month. Yes, both scuba programs uh, and, and the merit badge program specifically we can do. And we have all kinds of great things going on at Malibu Divers. We do uh, guided dives from local beaches once per month. Um, we're happy if, if there's enough people in a troop to set things up specifically for a troop, whether it be beach diving or boat diving. There's lots of great opportunities for stuff that we can do. We can do. call you and get the... Absolutely. Okay. Call or email me, yes. Okay, so again, we'll start taking signups on Monday for uh, Scuba BSA and uh, for Discover Local Diving. Uh, the, again, that medical release, please, please ask your scouts and your adult leaders to get that signed. And we will look forward to seeing you guys out of camp. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.